Okay, we are going live. I'll give you guys a second to, uh, you know, do your thing. Hi guys. Let's 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 hang out for a sec to uh, make sure that uh, everyone uh, gets in and all of that. Uh, I know I'm actually a minute early, right? Get fucked, internet. That's what you get. Um, I'm gonna get. Let, I'm just gonna hang out for a second because uh, a lot of people are joining and stuff. Um, and then we'll uh, get the lovely gals on. Um, how are you guys doing? Everyone doing good? Sing a high note. <laughs> My eyes are up here, okay? Whoa, yeah! Okay. Um, yes, I miss you guys too. I know I hope we can tour again soon. Believe me. I think, uh, I'm pretty sure as musicians, we're what, we're, uh, what you call the last responders. Um, oh, I'm glad to see everyone's doing great. Uh... You're doing okay. Is that a piano? Is that the piano where I wrote One Love? Yes, it is. Um, I wrote One Love on this piano. Um, and this piano is featured heavily on the Astoria album. Like, uh, it's quite distinct. You know what I mean? Uh, how's married life? It's pretty much exactly the same. Um. Okay. <laughs> Okay, um, all right, twins, let's find you. Uh, I'm sure they're in here. Fion, where are you, Fion? Uh, there, Christ, there's a lot of people in here. Uh, let's see. Viva Las Vegas! Oh, hey. oh this is like, this is... Oh, fun. fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, I can probably... You guys gotta go sideways, or I gotta... I feel like I'm gonna, like, slide off my couch and, like... <laughs> 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 well, fix, well, this out. fix it. It's okay. Okay, here we go. Just, there we just go. do one of those. Okay. Yeah. Oh, my God. Hang on. This is... Do I... Are we like this? I feel like you on our screen you're a little you're sideways. You're sideways. But Yeah, on my screen you are sideways. So let me see if I can It's just bizarre. So who is so who is really sideways? That's the question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Shocker that we're having technical issues, Christ. Um Hang on. here, you guys you guys talk to everyone for a sec. I'll fix it. Hi everybody. Hello. Yes. We are really stoked. We just released our song Dirty Dancing with yes. Josh Cor and produced with us and we're so excited about it. Um, it's it's a bop. Yeah, we've been like, like happy so dancing it. all day. Yeah, a lot yeah. of happy dancing <laughs> going on here. Yeah, I guess it's been fabulous. Yes, but good day. God damn this thing. I think everybody's saying, Josh, you are sideways. I see a lot yeah. of Yeah, shit. <laughs> uh. I know. I feel like I get I get confused with like some, sometimes you have to be this way, sometimes this way. Yeah. Who knows? I know most things are supposed to be horizontal, but uh, not this. <laughs> oh Christ! <sighs> what an awkward way for us to start. It's okay. It's all right. <laughs> when, we, when we first got on TikTok, all of our videos were the wrong way. We were like, <laughs> oh, oh no. Were they? <laughs> Oh, okay, that's better. <laughs> there we go. Ha -ha. Um, so it looks like the song is getting uh, really good reception so far. That's great. I know. We're really getting so many nice messages. Yeah, it's just like when we got premiered on American Songwriter, which is a magazine that we used to be subscribed to when we were writing in Nashville and stuff. So it was like a big moment that was for, surreal us. for us. We were yeah. really excited because awesome. we used to get that magazine monthly, and then it was like, <laughs> ah, there it is. Like, it was yeah. so cool. Yeah. Really that's cool. awesome. Yeah. Um, that's fucking fantastic. Um, should we talk? I, 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 I'm not sure exactly what we're going to talk about. Should we talk about, um, uh, you know, it's funny. Um, I, you guys probably don't remember this. So um, I met you guys when you were recording your first album, which was produced by our mutual friend, uh, the lovely Louise Burns. 
Yes. And I remember I didn't know you guys, and I, I walked into the 604 studio to say hi to Louise. And I w went in, and, you know, Louise and I had a hug, and I was like, hey. And then I looked over at you guys and was like, hi, I'm Josh. And I believe your guys' response was <laughs> something like that. <laughs> we were really shy. shy. We were like, I know. <laughs> um, and it kind of was too bad because we're twins, and like we were shy as a unit. Like, yeah, mutually just <laughs> really shy, which was like, really unfortunate because it made us like this conjoined, like, puddle shy. Of shy. Puddle yeah. Shy. Yeah. It, it, not anymore. So, All the shyness was just like completely evaporated. <laughs> that like <laughs> recording that album just like stripped me of all my shy. Like it's all yeah, gone. So it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was technically the first time we. we yeah. Were, I actually do remember that. I yeah. do remember that. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> so your guys's your guys's first record um, was a folk album. Um, I wanted I wanted to know if like you guys wanted to sort of like tell people like sort of what what was the choice to sort of like rebrand uh, into a pop act like where did that decision come from because I know that was your guys's choice. Yeah, yeah. it was. Um, I think it's one of those situations where you kind of just like get bored of doing the same thing. Like we switch genres so much as long as we've been playing music, we kind of just love everything. Cause I think like every yeah. different type of music serves a different purpose. Like there's like music you want to sit and listen to and like. And then there's music you want to dance to. And like, I mean, yeah, everything like serves a purpose and we love it all. So it was kind of just, we were like, oh, we've done this already. Now it's time to try something new. Yeah, we're really happy. Yeah, so much um, yeah and I, I think one of the things, so like when we first worked together, um, I took the gig because uh, several people whose opinions that I respect had recommended that I work with you guys. Um, Jonathan uh, had suggested it. Uh, and then our mutual friend, Emma, who is a fantastic director who had worked with you guys, had nothing but lovely things to say about you guys. And then actually my wife saw you guys play at the 604 Christmas party and she was like, you should work with those girls. They're gonna, they're gonna be big, you should work with them. Um, and when I, so our first day in the studio together, which wasn't on this song, it was on a different song that you guys at home have not heard yet. Um, which, oh my God, that, I think we're gonna finally get that mixed today, by the way. Um, <laughs> Um, but I was, I didn't really know what to expect. And I was like, I was slightly, um, I was slightly skeptical just because you guys were, were very young. And I was like, you know, I, I, I worked with a lot of artists where sometimes I've worked with people where you're, you're doing songwriting together, but actually it's like, I'm sitting in the room and writing a song while the artist says, yes, I like that. No, I don't like that. And like not actually contributing, you know? And then I was so impressed with you guys. I didn't realize that you had done like spent all of your teens in Nashville going to like songwriter circles. Um, you guys must have learned a lot from doing all of that Nashville stuff. We did. Absolutely. We used to write every single day. Like after school, we'd just come home like and immediately start writing. And like, I just remember we usually would write separately, like go to our separate bedrooms and just write. And, like we'd just be playing for hours. And that happened yeah. like, like every day. We were just so passionate about it. So I think that that time really yeah, we'd be like sending our songs. Yeah. We are like part of the Nashville Songwriters Association, which is basically where you can send your songs in for critiques. And yeah. um, we'd be sending them in and be getting like them totally ripped apart by these like. <laughs> we were into it. Like we, we liked, liked it. Like we, we weren't. We didn't have a problem with it, even at that yeah. age. Like because we were like, I don't know, like this room to, to improve. You know, like mm -hmm. yeah. So it's, yeah, it, it's funny. Like you kind of have to develop a pretty thick skin because like everyone's a fucking critic, and you're never gonna please everyone. So that's a pretty good lesson to learn at a young age to not be too precious with uh, with your shit, you know? Yeah, totally. Absolutely. So yeah, I think that really helped us just like not being precious about it and just always like pumping out material. So yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm the same. I'm always like, I, I, is there room for it to be better? Like I, I, I never feel like I'm done with a song if I can think of any more ideas. If I can think of other, other ideas then I've, I've, it's probably not good enough yet, you know? Yeah, yeah totally. totally. They teach that a lot in Nashville as well, like just a song needs to be reworked and you know I mean not always needs to be I don't totally believe that but like you know it's it's not finished after the first day you know like take time yeah totally I think another thing that I really was impressed with with you guys um which I, I was it was so refreshing was how seriously you guys take uh lyric writing um and I'm sure that's a thing from Nashville because that's a very like Nashville thing to think about but I think in like in pop music a lot, I feel like the lyrics for a lot of artists are just kind of like afterthoughts, um, and they don't really spend time to actually craft like an interesting um, an interesting turn of phrase. Uh, whereas you guys like are all about like you want to say something unique and you don't want to repeat what other people have said. Yeah, 
we're into yeah. that. Like, we love storytelling, which is kind of like the nature of country songwriting in general is just always telling the story. So yeah, so yeah. we kind of like yeah. keep that as much, like as much as we can. Like, and also like I do like um, pop music. Like sometimes I don't think that it necessarily needs to be a story. It needs to like really make perfect sense in the way like a structured country song would like it's also yeah. like, about the word sound coming out of your mouth and I think that there's like an art to kind of developing a sentence that just rolls off the tongue very easily as well I agree I, I think uh it's sometimes it can be it can be really difficult because you you can know what you want to say but if it doesn't sing well it's just not going to work like if the emphasis is on the wrong syllable it, it doesn't it doesn't quite work you know I definitely have got, had to go back to the drawing board myself a million fucking times. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so also, we should tell everyone too, um, so we've done like several songs together and we're going to do several more, I think, or I hope. Um, and um, also, uh, I have an album that's coming out uh, this year, um, no release date yet, but it's getting pretty close to done. And um, you guys were very kind to come and feature on a song of mine as well. Yeah, yes, we're really very excited fun. about so that. So excited about that. That's such a great song too. Like, yeah. Just, Thank you. It's, not, like, it's, it's funny. So like, basically, like for you guys at home, what happened with that one was um, I get commissioned to write songs for other people all the time. And um, it was a song that I got asked to write for Walk Off the Earth. So when I was doing the demo for it, because they feature male and female voices, um, I asked you guys if you would sing, uh, just sing on the demo, and you guys were very nice and just did it. Uh, and then for whatever reason, that song didn't get uh, end up getting used, which happens like all the time. Um, and I was like, well, this is a good song. I, maybe, maybe I'll just use it. And then I asked you guys to just come and like feature and actually do some leads on it and stuff. And it turned out fucking awesome. Yeah, it sounds amazing. Like we're really stoked about that one being released as yeah. well. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm really happy that uh, I'm really happy it actually worked out that way. I'm, I'm glad they didn't use the song now. <laughs> And you know what's funny? This is true, actually. Some of the biggest songs that I have written have actually been songs that I've written for other people that eventually, like, came back to me and got, like, didn't actually end up getting recorded. There's, like, at least three that I can think of where that was the case. That's just, <laughs> that's just, that's just the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. So when it came to us working on this song, I'm trying to remember exactly how we did it. I remember I was driving home, and it started with, I had just, like, a really simple idea where I was thinking, like, there's two of you, let's really feature that there's, there's two lead singers. And I was, I, I think I came in and all I said was like, let's do something where the chorus is like a chant, some sort of like da 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 just on one note, just like a chant. And we, I guess we just kind of ran from there. Yeah, I think that that's, yeah, that's, that's my memory of it too. And I remember, I really liked the idea of like how it, it's so fun in the verse, how it's like one voice and then the other person like- kind The call and answer, yeah. Like yeah, the call and answer, yeah, yeah. And I, I thought that that was really cool. I remember, <laughs> I remember, so I was working on the music track and you guys were sitting behind me on the couch playing around with different lyric ideas. And when you guys are working on lyric ideas, you sort of sing very quietly. And eventually I was sitting there and it was like, there was the identical twin whisper singing happening behind me for a very long time. And I had to eventually be like, guys, I love you, but we're getting a little creepy in here. Yeah, it was a little like one, two, Freddy's coming for you. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. That I, really love that. I love that. I feel like when I'm writing, I'm like in my own little world that I didn't even realize I was whisper singing. Like, you know? <laughs> but it, it was the it was the two of you whisper singing in perfect unison that was doing it. <laughs> Very fun, like the right? same voice whispering. <laughs> Twice, yeah. Yeah, okay. do, do you guys find like I know I I mean obviously you're twins so it's even more so but I, I find with when I sing with my sister Sarah there's just sort of a, a thing when people are family where you just like you naturally phrase together and you naturally blend together just a lot easier than you would with with someone you're not related to do you do you guys find that oh, oh totally. yeah totally agree especially since we've been singing together for so long we can just like yeah really like we always like we do it all the time. Like with, when we're listening to the radio in the car, like we just like start three part harmony, like with the singer that's singing the song. Yeah. Like, so, like, so we're doing the harmon harmonies for them, and like just like right at the same together. Time, like, yeah. yeah, yeah. Apparently, when we were kids, our grandparents said that like, and, like this might have been kind of creepy for them. They'd be like driving us in the car, we're in the back seat, and like we'd immediately just no counting or anything, just start a song at exactly the same time. Like, oh, so, really? Yeah, I learned in preschool yeah. or something. Like just like and they're like what. <laughs> 
anyway, that's twin I'm magic. Gonna... That's twin <laughs> magic for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's like that's like one of you is across the world and starts to and like hurts her foot, and the other one's like, oh my god, my foot. Yeah, I think it could happen. Maybe. It's just like, it's like, you know, close bond, right? Like, <laughs> oh my God, I want you guys to have special like twin psychic powers. That would be awesome. So, um, so we, I don't, I don't even know how many songs we're totally going to do together. We haven't really like decided. I, I think we should just sort of like keep going until we feel like we're good. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I like to, you know what? Like, Want to write as many songs as possible like keep you know yeah like, that was that was one of the other things that i was really struck with with you guys was um usually when you just sort of like i mean we knew each other in passing but we weren't like buddies yet um when we started working together and like usually when you when you meet someone and just try and jump right into writing a song it can be like kind of um strange because you're strangers and you don't like it's a little weird um, yeah. But with you guys, we just seem to get along, like, creatively speaking, like, just immediately. Well, and, like, personally speaking, too. But you, you know what I mean? Yeah, I totally agree. I, it was really, like, awesome coming away from, like, our first writing sessions. It was like, oh, this is really working out. Like, feels like, you know, personally and also, like, um, I don't know, for, yeah, yeah, creatively, like, just really blending. And, like, we were really stoked about it. Still, Yeah. Um, oh, my God. Let's see if people – I'm going to see if people have questions for you guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh, someone says, uh, someone says that song is really catchy and I'm glad you didn't get rid of the folk vocals. Yeah, we, we definitely tried to like keep you guys uh, with the layered, the layered vocal thing that you guys do. Yeah, totally. Yes. Gotta keep a bit of folk in there. Keep um, someone's asking if we used analog synths uh, in the bridge and yes, we did. Um, okay, so Hannah, hi Hannah, is asking, how do you guys decide who will sing uh, each part? We just take turns. Like every song, like, it doesn't really matter which one it is. We'll just like somebody will sing the I'm like, oh, Brianne did the last one, so I'll do this one. Yeah, that yeah. just like keeps it like the most even and fair in our opinion. Like well, sometimes we'll like we'll sing the verse. Like if we write one verse each, I think that was the case yeah. in one of the other songs mm -hmm. we did. It was like yeah, um, saying my verse and she sang her verse that she wrote the lyrics to and stuff. Yeah, so I think that's usually how we decide. Yeah. Uh. Someone's asking what program did we use? Well, uh, Pro Tools. Um, did I sing on the song? No, I didn't. Um, uh, where did the idea for us to collab start? It was it was really just Jonathan, our 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 manager, uh, asked us both to do it, and we were all into it. I guess. Yes. Uh, what was the worst part about collabing through the pandemic? Ooh. Mm. Oh, collabing through the pandemic has been. A little struggle with like all, with all of our collabs but I guess I guess just like the like I don't know I just feel like being creative with somebody in person is so much better like it's yeah better. like we did we did a, a couple like zoom writing sessions together but it's not the same is it oh, no. it's really not and then like there's like the lag and I don't know it's, yeah. not as quick. it's not as quick everything takes longer and it's a little frustrating so that was yeah yeah that's what we thought about <laughs> Simkin is commenting love that Jonathan uh -huh. <laughs> Of course he is. Um, someone is asking um, if, uh, do, you, do you like to start with lyrics or music or melody? Depends. I think it always depends on the song. Yeah. I think um, this one started, I think with, this one started with this melody, melody for sure. I think I would usually start with melody, naturally. But yeah. sometimes I know you start with lyrics. Start with lyrics, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think for me, I think nine times out of 10, I probably start from, from melody um, or every now and again, It'll be like a riff that I'll come up with. And I definitely do have like a lyric book with just like random ideas written down. I, I don't know about you guys, but for me, like if possible, I like to have the title first because if I don't have the title, it just, it, it always fucking ends up that like I'll write a chorus and then I'll get to the spot where obviously you insert the title here and I'll, I'll be totally fucking trapped. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same. I always start with the title because I've trapped myself many times. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I get like I usually don't start with a title, and I always get trapped in it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> Someone's thing. asking once Mariana's trench can go on tour again, would uh, would we take Fion with us? Yeah, absolutely, we would. Wow, that would be amazing. We'd love that. We'd love that so much. That'd be awesome. Um, someone's asking how long did it take you to shoot the video? Well, that's uh, it's it's like one, one day. day. Yeah, it was like a one day yeah. shoot. Yeah. yeah. 
I mean, we got that dance pretty last minute. So we that- learned that dance like <laughs> literally less than 48 hours before we had to go perform it. So who, 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 who did the, who wrote the choreo for you? Or um, did you guys? Carly Gill. Yeah, this girl. Carly yeah, Gill. Carly Gill yeah. choreographed it. We went in for one rehearsal with her, but she couldn't be on set because of COVID and like the restrictions. Oh, fuck, so, yeah. So it's like, yeah. we had one rehearsal and I was like, okay, I gotta go practice it. And we were like, oh. <laughs> oh my god my uh my internet uh my internet went down last night so while i was trying to fix it my wife happened to go on instagram live right as uh alana you were trying to uh recreate the dance with uh mixed results mixed results <laughs> it didn't go because you know what i realized like because we that was we filmed that a couple months ago and brianne's like do the dance and i was like okay and right as i started i realized i didn't really remember it well <laughs> and I, I went for it and i was like I with so it. much confidence. I went with too much confidence, and I was like, <laughs> no, I was like, that's embarrassing, but. <laughs> like, oh, oh, no, <laughs> it's all part of your charm. Um, uh, let's see what else we got here. Um, uh, uh, yes, I'm sh- someone really likes your makeup. Oh, I, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Um, someone's asking, um, do you have any tips for new songwriters? I think, oh, sorry, you go ahead. I was like, I started exactly. <laughs> yeah, that was weird. Um, I think just like consistency, like not being too hard on yourself as well. <laughs> oh, 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 Christ, dog option. Okay, dogs. <laughs> um, but yeah, not being too hard on yourself, being consistent, like writing a song a day and also finishing your songs that's yeah. the biggest yeah. hard part like finish but them and then like if it's you know you can always come back to it but like always finish it because if you have like, a I, I totally agree with that one mm-hmm. no guys that that dog barking is definitely my dog, uh, <laughs> I wish it was a dog. <laughs> yeah there's a lot of chaotic energy at the moment <laughs> uh, uh, yeah it, it's Benny um any plan? How long have you been writing songs slash music? Um, we started, I think I like just wrote my first song when I was nine years old. Like, cause our dad wrote songs with his friends and stuff. So we, it was on our radar because he was in a band. Yeah. And we were like, oh, we want to write songs like dad. And yeah. then we just did it. And then it kind of just like, we never really stopped. Like, I think we started to take it like seriously at 12, 13. Because we were really yeah. into Taylor Swift, and so we were just like totally riding the the wavelength of the girl guitar, like singer songwriter. Yeah. yeah. We were like, that's when it started like daily, like always being really intense about it, and like yeah. Um, I think I was. I don't ever remember not being writing, but like I re- I remember being like eight years old and like writing songs about like basketball and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, looking back on those songs is so funny. Uh, uh, oh, wait, that, that's a good one. Hang on. Where do you girls live? I work at a radio station in Vancouver and would love to interview you. Oh, we live in North Vancouver. Yes. So we would... uh, they live in Vancouver. Uh, I'm sure you can uh, get in touch with them through Simpkin Artist Management. Yes, absolutely. Uh, what are you all the most excited to do after the pandemic? Play concerts. (laughs) (laughs) I think for me, I'm excited to like be able to go on vacation again, maybe. Yeah. Vacation would be nice. Or just like regularly see people. (laughs) Yeah, that's that's a good one. Have writing sessions in person. Yeah. Yeah. Without having to like feel like, I don't know, there's restrictions and stuff like. Uh, a lot of people are stoked that you guys are Taylor Swift fans. I'm a Taylor Swift fan as well. She's a killer songwriter. The love will never die. Yeah. Uh, who would be your dream collab? Um, oh my gosh. I'm going to say the obvious. It has to be Taylor Swift. Yeah, that would be I mean, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I mean, if we're like, I mean, like, really big here, like, We've always been big fans of Elton John. Oh yeah, that an Elton John, John collab. An Elton John collab. Elton John collab, yeah. That would be sick. <laughs> yeah, um, cool. yeah. You know, I totally thought he deserved um, 
uh, Taron Egerton. I totally thought he deserved uh, an Oscar nomination for the Rocket Man movie. I feel like maybe he just didn't get one because the year before was a biopic movie with Remy Malik, so like maybe or something. But he totally deserved one. I know. Uh, let's see what else we got. Oh my God, you dogs! <laughs> I know. I swear they they uh, yeah they're aware. Uh, yeah, someone's saying so much squeaking. Yeah, I mean. Uh, do you guys have a favorite Taylor Swift album? Um, I think 1989. Um, yeah, that's my fave for sure. It's super great. But folk, I'm loving folklore and Evermore as well. Like the, the Evermore watching. is my favorite of the of the two of the two. Yeah, I thought 89 was uh, or 1989 was was wicked. That's also like uh, Max Martin co-wrote that whole record with her, and he is like obviously the fucking king of pop music all time yeah um uh oh my god seriously dogs you're you're killing me you're fucking killing me you're killing me um uh, uh someone's asking where your band name came from um it's like our last name Finn, we have two last names, like a double barrel name, but Finn in Irish is Fionn, so it's like our last name. It's an Irish name. Um, yeah. And like when we first started our band, it was definitely more like a, because our dad's from Ireland, there was more of like a Celtic, Celtic yeah. sound behind it, like, which is, you know, maybe one day we'll bring it back, but like, you know, we're kind of doing something different now, but like that's kind of originally where it kind of started from. But it's like, it's essentially our name, like our last name. Gotcha. Um, someone is asking, what instruments do you guys play? I play guitar. I play mandolin and a bit of bass. Oh, yeah, that's right. You do play mandolin. Yeah. Um, I haven't played it in a while because I haven't really had the opportunity. But we should, should we, even if it is pop music, we could totally still figure out a way to put a mandolin on uh, on a pop song. That could be cool. Doug, yeah, I'm serious. You're fucking killing me, you two. <laughs> Jesus Christ. A lot of people are asking you to see my ridiculous dogs. Okay. Oh, I want to see them. I want to see them. <laughs> That's Benny. Oh, oh that's cute. Aww. No, it's as soon as they're on camera, then they just shut the fuck up. It's just like when when they know that I have to like work things to do, then then they're. Um, so funny. Okay, let's see what else people want to know. Um, how many songs have we done together? So we've we've recorded three songs together. We have written a fourth that we have not recorded yet, and we plan to do uh, more as well. Um, uh, Jesus, there's a lot of people in here. Um, <laughs> someone's asking what our record label is. We are both signed on 604 Records out of <laughs> Vancouver. Benny, I swear to God, you're killing me! Uh, D... <laughs> Someone's that. <laughs> My wife has joined the chat and she just wrote, How hard was it to work with Josh? Be honest. <laughs> so difficult. <laughs> Can it, you? Very e no. easy. 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 Yes. <laughs> Creating on the same wave. Like, yes. 100%. I'm being honest. Yes. <laughs> Someone's asking, what is the highest note you can hit? My guess is that's probably a question for me, but maybe you guys know what uh, your highest note is. I actually don't, don't know. know. I should figure I'm it out. I'm going to experiment. Do you know? What's, what's yours, Josh? I know where my chest voice go ends. It's G5. Uh, that guy. Pretty awesome. Ah! Oh, ah, wow. Um, that's awesome. Uh... You know, the funny thing with being like, I guess you would say that like when it, that's kind of like my thing is like a, you know, I'm like a high note guy, I guess, like a, like a specialist of some kind. The only problem is then uh, you get on, you get on the road and if you're having like one day when like you might be fighting a cold a little bit or something, or just didn't get it up, give it up sleep, then you're just like, who wrote this shit? <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh, why did oh, you just do it? <laughs> like, I don't know. Especially so being on the road, like if you're on the road for a long time, like your voice probably gets so tired. Um, oh yeah. Like, 
Yeah, I've had to have I've I've had a couple of times when um uh in in the United States there's actually like a um there's a there's a system in place called Rock Doc and if your voice is getting fuck up, fucked up a doctor will come to the show and they'll shoot you full of uh, steroids and stuff and try and just make sure you can get through the show that day and it works but the problem is is then you're a little bit worse the next day so then you have to do it every day pretty much for the rest of the tour and you get diminishing diminishing results every day oh god but I've been there. Um, someone's asking if you guys sang choir in high school. Um, we didn't sing choir in high school, but we did it for like five years in elementary yeah, school. Yeah, in elementary school. And it was the so most fun. Much fun. Yes. Yeah, we did like a lot of musical theater, choir y type things. Yeah. yeah. Uh, ugly sis stepsisters in Cinderella in high school. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like musical duet. Yes. It was uh. <laughs> Um, what is the most memorable gig moment that you guys have had? Um, a couple of years ago, we got the opportunity to sing at Massey Hall in Toronto. Yes. For the tour the sing where? Sorry? We got to play at Massey Hall because we were opening for Royal Wood, and that was so oh yeah, yeah. Massey and Hall is amazing. I um, I actually uh, years ago I remember like us doing like a, a sold out show at Massey Hall and it was like such a milestone for me at the time. Yeah, absolutely. Like sold out show at Massey Hall. That's like a legendary. That's venue. legendary. So, like, yeah. Yeah. Um, what do you guys do? You guys have any vocal warm ups that you normally do? Um, hmm, we not necessarily like. I kind of I don't know. We just kind of start singing and like singing the song a few times and it kind of warms up our voice. I don't know if that's like super technical. Maybe my old singing teacher's on here probably. Like, <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah. But we just, you don't drink cold water, I know that. So it's usually like warm tea, lukewarm water. Yeah. No dairy products. No, yeah, dairy. Like yeah, dairy is bad. Um, my, my rule is also like if we're playing a show, I never eat dinner because I don't want to be like digesting food while I'm on stage and trying to sing. That is um, oh my God, my mom years ago, uh, my, so my mom was a vocal teacher and she for, well, ACDC were here recording an album at one point that singer, Brian, was taking lessons from my mom at the house all the time. Oh. And uh, he hadn't sung a note in like two years. So he was pretty out of shape. And like, you know what ACDC sounds like? It's like in the Stratus fucking fear. Um, and he w got put into singing lessons because he was tasting blood when he was singing. Oh, no. and, and his vocal warm up was to just scream. His vocal warm was just like, ah! <laughs> like that was all he did. Like that sounds like yeah. an old wives' tale or something. Oh my gosh! Like something that you just would never. That's hear. like the nightmare story. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I've I've got a bad one too. Actually, when I was about eighteen, I was singing in the studio and I was pushing my voice too hard, and I dislocated a disc in my neck. A disc popped out. It was awful. I had to go get it like put back in. It was very painful. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, Moral of the story: Get good technique, kids. <laughs> Now I want to like figure out some actual yeah, warm -up. I need to like start warming up again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see what else. Uh, a lot of people don't like that neck thing. I mean, yeah, it was gross. Yeah. You want to know what's funny, dude? I actually have I actually have the recording of the vocal because we were recording when it happened. So um, there's me being like, hey! and then like you can hear like a <laughs> and me and like a very sober silence <laughs> um how so whoa so what was the hardest thing to pick up when transitioning to professional recording um i don't know if anything was really like we'd been recording like in our dad's friend's house and like we'd done some like demos in nashville and stuff so sure kinda, i had you to think back pretty I don't know I think that I was always kind of used to it like because we just started really young so the, yeah I think that, like I think when we first started recording our first album with Louise I was like self-conscious if people could see me singing but that's kind of that's the window yeah that was part of the shyness <laughs> kind of thing I was yeah. like what if I look weird or something that was right yeah yeah but that's gone now. I think maybe some vocal like performance maybe like because there's you, something different about performing in a booth rather than like performing on stage it's, you know, because I, I feel like I used to over project when I didn't need to, because it's like supposed to be a little bit more emotional and um, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, I also think, um, I also think uh, 
for people who are problem because I grew up in a recording studio so like I knew what my recorded voice sounded like and knew what my voice sounded like in headphones before I could read but for most people if it's like their first time getting in a vocal booth their voice does not sound like what they think it was gonna like it doesn't sound like what it sounds like in their head and it can be it can take people um quite a long time to just adjust to getting used to like what their recorded voice sounds like I think yeah that's true um do you have a favorite karaoke song? Oh, I haven't done karaoke since oh, I was a kid. Karaoke. But Alana used to be like <laughs> seven years old. Like at, we'd go like on vacation with our parents if they ever had like a karaoke night or something. Um, Alana would be up there singing um, Proud Mary by Tina Turner. Turner. That was my, yeah, like, <laughs> that was my song. Proud she Mary, was, really? Like, well, that's a good one. Oh yeah, and Brienne was, um, I always picked that um, Macy Gray song, the I try. I think that's what it's called. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a good song too. Yeah. Uh, you know what's funny? Um, I actually really don't like karaoke because if I'm in a, if, in a bar or whatever and they're doing karaoke, I feel very, that's the one time when I feel self conscious singing because I feel like I'm a professional. And some of the people in here are going to know that I'm a professional and I don't want to get up and shit the bed in front of everybody. You know what I mean? So I, I don't I, like, I feel like I have the people will have a higher expectation and you know, when in reality it's probably like I'm drunk or whatever, but um, I, yeah, <laughs> the only time I do it is if my wife forces me to, because I can't really say no to her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. That's so funny. Um, yeah. Uh, Let's say, what is your dream venue to play? Ooh. I don't know. I, I think, like, my dream is just to do, like, a cool summer festival tour. Oh, yeah. Like, at outdoor, just, like, any outdoor venue. I just feel like, because we went to the Skookum Festival in 2018 in Vancouver. Yep. And I remember watching The Killers, and I think I was up on somebody's shoulder, so I could see everybody. And I was just looking over the crowd, and it was just so huge and i don't know just something about the outdoor event really yeah the energy outside was so amazing so i think anywhere anywhere outdoors where like a lot of people can congregate that's kind of my dream <laughs> yeah and those outdoor shows are, are are a lot of fun too because there's um there's it's not just all on the pressure isn't only on you to bring out people because a festival show is always like a huge lineup of artists um and that's also a great opportunity like even if you're like a starting out band and you're earlier in the day that you're still gonna get up and and you're gonna play to like fifty thousand people or whatever and there there's a there's no other way you can do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, are there any tricks from folk music that you guys used in this pop song? Uh, Maybe just like this this kind of storytelling. Element. Yeah. Because we wanted to yeah. try like a song to convey a story of like maybe like just because we actually we both met our first boyfriends on the same night at the same bar, but they didn't know each other. Yeah. Oh, like, that's funny. Interesting. I know it's, it's a weird twin story, but like, just remember like the idea that like we just went to this bar and we were like, went there to have a good time, but like ended up making these really meaningful relationships out of just meeting random people at bars. So we were trying to kind of, I don't know, like sort of put that, that kind of story mm -hmm. into this song. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh. What um, what songwriters inspire you the most? Um, oh, I, yeah, obviously I'm like Taylor Swift. Yeah, obviously that was like the initial inspiration. I think Ed Sheeran in his early days, like we like we still love him, but like that first record that he put out was really inspirational was, when we were yeah. came out, we were like thirteen, or fourteen or something. So yeah, like, you know what I appreciate about um, Ed Sheeran is. Um, he, I mean, he's got huge range as a songwriter. He can he can write a lot of genres really well. He's a great singer. But I really appreciate that as successful as he is, his live show is still just a coffee shop show. Like, it's still just him with an acoustic guitar and a loop pedal, and that's it. Um, and he, But he goes out and plays, like, fucking stadiums just just with an acoustic guitar. I, I think there's... Uh, there's something uh, there's something really charming about that, um, and it also speaks volumes to how good he is that he can go out and hold people's attention for 90 minutes just with him himself and a guitar. That's very impressive. Yeah. I've always thought that. Like, I yeah, I'd love to see one of his live shows for yeah. sure. Um. Oh my God, I actually have a funny story about Ed Sheeran. One time at the Much Music Video Awards, 
Um, people, people never considered this. I, I know they don't really do those awards anymore, um, but people never really considered that like it's an open bar event. And when you do all the press, it's at the end of the night. Do, do you see what I'm getting at here? Um, so, so I was standing waiting to go do something or other and Ed Sheeran walked up to me with, with like a fucking magnum of scotch. And he was like, all right, let's do this. And he poured like a full pint glass of scotch to each of us, for each of us. So we slammed this fucking pint of scotch together. And then he was like, all right, let's go take over an interview. And him and I just went and like completely took over someone else's interview. We're just like yelling and ridiculous and yeah. I was holding two microphones because I said I had that much that much extra to say. It was nonsense. <laughs> that's funny. That's, oh my gosh, that's hilarious. That's funny. Yeah, that's a good story. Um, have you guys picked up any hobbies during the pandemic? Cooking, I think. Yeah. We cook way more now than we ever used to. We used to only, like, it sounds so bad. Like, when I look back on my past self, I used to only make eggs. And yeah. <laughs> and pasta and, and it was just that for, for like a year and i can't even believe i used to live that way now like now we, we're making curries we're making like we're making lots of stuff i don't know lots of stuff yes. yeah so that's it's fabulous but yeah i i know that like you like cooking josh i feel like i've seen like lots of pictures and on your feed and stuff so your cooking is probably way better than our cooking but like <laughs> <laughs> at least yeah we got to start somewhere yeah <laughs> You got it there somewhere, and you know what? That's a great life skill to have. And even even if you're not going to be like a master chef or whatever, I think there's something really lovely and um, simple and lovely about just being like, hey, you know what? I like you, I care about you, and I took some time to prepare this for you. That's a nice thing to do for people. Yeah, yeah. yeah totally. absolutely. Um, which part of a song do you generally write first? I guess they mean like verse versus chorus versus bridge. For me, it's like, who fuck, it's the Wild West, whatever, whatever comes out, comes out, I don't know. How about you guys? <laughs> the Wild West. Sometimes the chorus um, is first for me. A lot of the time, most of the time, it's the verse. Yeah. Sometimes it's like the pre-chorus. I know, I guess, so I guess it's kind of the Wild West for me, too. Like, yeah, yeah. and I guess the same thing. Yeah, too. I think generally the first verse, like her, but then, yeah, yeah. So, same thing. Mm -hmm. um, well, okay. There's, wow, we, there's a lot of questions here. Um, <laughs> someone says, Dirty Dancing is a bop. Thank you. Hell yeah. Thank it's... you. Do you guys have a favorite musical? Oh, um, favorite musical. Um, it's like funny, but it's actually Fiddler on the Roof. I love we love Fiddler on yeah. the Roof. Yeah. We did it, like, we were in it twice. Just for we some reason, kids. when we were kids, I, like, know every I'm pretty song. sure we just, like, played townspeople, but... Yeah, we were, like, <laughs> I loved all the songs, like, yes. so much. Just, yeah, we loved watching the other people perform. We were, like, little kids just, like, learning all the songs. Like. <laughs> so, just for some reason, yeah, it's always been my favorite. Um, someone's asking, do you write songs together, or do you split lyrics and melody, etc.? We generally write separate, mm -hmm. um, unless we're writing with another person. And I, I think that that works really well for us, because if there's another person there, like, we're not going to be like as brutal with each other as we would be if it was just the two. <laughs> Actually, that's funny. Um, that's funny. I've noticed that about you guys. Um, and I, I remember Emma saying something about that as well. I like, I guess because you guys are like so close and so used to each other, you you guys will say like the harshest shit to one another, but it's like not offensive at all. Yeah, it's like, I know, it's just, it's a, it's a strange dynamic, the twin one, like, I don't know. But like, it's not like you guys are actually being mean to each other, it's just like, you have no filter with each other, which is hilarious to be around. Yeah, when you would, like, with somebody else, you would, like, kind of sugarcoat whatever you're trying to say, and, like, mm -hmm. to us, we're just like, no. Yeah, you guys do not do that. Yeah, <laughs> but, like, it's worse if it's just the two of us, because, like, we can just, like, I remember one time just getting in this major argument over, like, we were trying to write, co-write a song together, and the argument was, like, should it be like two BPM faster? Like something really stupid. And, and we were like, oh, like faster, it's like, like slower. slower. Faster, slower. <laughs> we're like, okay, we can't do this. Now. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> um, someone is asking if you do you guys have the same vocal range? Mine's actually, I think uh, yours yours a little range. lower. I mean, yeah, Alana, like, yours is a little lower, I think. Yeah. Um, I'm not asking them that. You don't want to know. Okay. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, how do you both wind down? Oh, is that like, like, how do we chill? Chill? We, you know, I we, guess. Our show recently has been devoted to season three of RuPaul's Drag Race. Yeah. Every night. Uh. Like, we, it took us like a month to finish it. And like, when it was over, I'm not gonna lie, it was pretty, it's it's pretty, pretty sad. Yeah. Now My it's wife like, is pretty now. into that show as well. Yeah. <laughs> Um, what's a song that you wish you wrote? Gosh, there's so many. Um, of course. There's so many that that's just such a difficult question. Um, 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 you know what song I wish I wrote? God only knows what I'd be without you. It's a beautiful song. Oh, that's wait. so beautiful. Wait, what's the mm. name? Do you guys have an album title yet? Not for no. the latest one. No. Yeah, because we're kind of like at the moment, um, just we're releasing kind of single by single. Yeah. Like, yeah. Keeping, like really consistent with the content. So like, so I haven't really thought about it as an album yet. Like when that all comes together, then I think it would be, yeah, it'll be a little yeah. easier to kind of think of the title. I think at the moment it probably makes sense. Um, it probably makes sense to do uh, singles for now because if you were to put out a whole album right now, you couldn't tour to support it. So I think I think singles makes makes sense for sure. Yeah. Um, someone's asking what <laughs> what my own least favorite song of mine is. <laughs> I'll tell you what, if I gave you an honest answer on that, I would be a bad performer, but you don't know. Uh, do you guys have a dream place to tour? Like, or do you like dream of maybe one day we'll go get to tour in blank? Oh, yes. I think Europe, like touring around Europe, I think would be so cool. Because then you get to see the whole thing. Like playing yeah. a show in the UK, I think would be really fabulous. Fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, that that's really it for me. Like, I mean, like, I'd love to tour the states as well, and, and Canada. Like, I'd like to just tour yeah. everywhere. Like, yeah. yeah, you know what I always look at it as is uh, any day you get to play music for a living is a good day. That's yeah, true. I totally agree with that. It doesn't really matter where it is. But... Yeah. Uh, people are trying to guess what my wife's least favorite song of mine is. <laughs> I answered that question. You answered that question. What is it? So, uh, someone asked this last time we did a live stream, which is the only live stream we've ever done, and the answer is, I haven't had enough. You don't like that song? I don't like that song. <laughs> what? <sighs> Dick. <laughs> I'm just going to say that in eighth grade, everybody loved that song. Yeah. Is that song about, about you? Just, just for the <laughs> there. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um do you uh <laughs> oh, oh, oh. again with the dog with the dog chaos. I'm sorry guys. <laughs> Apparently you also said desperate measures at some point. <laughs> you just hate my stuff now, don't you? You just hate all my stuff just <laughs> lording around. What's the it might be desperate measures. <laughs> oh, someone made my great pie. We gave the pies to our neighbors, and they liked the great pie better than my pie. But I didn't know how to make a crust. That's true. Um, are there any covers you want to do? Do you guys do like? Do you guys cover songs on your social media sometimes? We do. Yeah, yeah. We do a lot of YouTube covers on YouTube. We do a few just when we feel like it. We find songs that we really like. Yeah, we did one of like off of Miley Cyrus's album, the High song. Have you have you listened? Oh to that yeah, one? yeah, we love that one. Love so. that one. So You're that right. was like our favorite cover recently. Yeah, I you know what I really appreciate about um about Miley Cyrus is she's got such a unique um voice. I I, I think she's got such a cool like raspy, attitudey voice. I, I definitely dig her. Absolutely. Um, Four songs. We've written four songs so far. Yes. Four songs. And actually, um, the 
I think Daniel is going to send, uh, one of them's getting mixed right now. Um, we've been working on uh, making revisions to it over the last like three or four days. Um, so I think we w will have the final version either, either he may have sent it already or he'll be, or by tomorrow morning. Oh, nice. fabulous. I'm so Love excited. That. Yeah, it's going to be great. We just had to go through it, but, you know, like, it always takes a bunch of revisions and stuff. And then you guys will have your uh, best of if you want to change anything. Um, yeah. Fion, do you have any more music video plans? Oh, oh, yes. oh yes. We're actually filming one tomorrow. We're tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're filming one tomorrow? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we are. We're filming yeah. one tomorrow. Still going to practice We're the dance. That one. Yeah, it's a little last minute. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, um, for what's on? Sorry. For what's on? Oh, this one's for um. This, it's a song called "Let Me Go" that we wrote with Jared Manierka. Yeah. Oh yeah, awesome. Yeah, so I'm like excited about that. Uh. Someone's saying to do a collab with Haley Williams. She's fabulous. I love Haley Williams. Yeah. Are there any other 604 artists that you want to work with? Um, yeah, there's lots. Um, yeah. I'd love to, I'd like, I like working with them, like everybody. Any, yeah, you know, everybody's just, so I think collaborating with, with people is so fun. Yeah. Um, so yeah. We're down. I think we're going to collab with Madison Gifford and write songs with her, Molly Nell. Yeah. There are like, people on the label. Yeah, but we're like down. We're, Anybody, I think Vox Rea a few times we tried to plan sessions, but they didn't really like pan out. So hopefully after the, after the pandemic, especially, we can actually get together and yeah. try and create right. something. Like, yeah. 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 Um, uh, would you do a, someone's asking if I would do a, Collaboration with Five Seconds of Summer. I did. I did write a song with it. Um, question for Fion. Uh, in, in three. In three words, what's it like to work with Josh? In three words. Three words. Oh my gosh. Um, Not that great. Not that. <laughs> oh my um, gosh. No, I. I don't know. Uh, I it's really okay, don't you don't have to say The only thing that can come to my head is super awesome. I'm like, that's all three words. That's like, <laughs> yeah. super awesome. No, that's <laughs> more than three symbols. Yeah, this, yeah. But yeah, it's great. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. Yeah. Super fun. Uh -huh. Funny. You're a funny guy, Josh. You make us laugh. Yeah. Giggling. Uh -huh. um, did you guys both know me before working with me? In passing. In passing, yes. yes. Yeah, we knew each other in passing. Um, is it difficult to film during the pandemic? How big is the team on set? Uh, the team has to be really small. Mm -hmm. So I think it's like a max of six people, but that like gets eaten up really fast with like the two of us, makeup artist, and then it's basically just like camera person and director. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm currently trying to figure out, um, I've written a song that's going to use like a whole symphony orchestra and I'm trying to figure out how to do that in a COVID safe way. I think probably recording each section one at a time or something like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> someone asks what song did I write with five seconds of summer? It was called story of another us. Um, Uh, have you guys had any uh, motivation or songwriting blocks during quarantine? I know you guys to be a very motiv motivated duo. Yeah. Yes. We've struggled with that, though. Honestly, like, because I, I used to write every day, but now it's just, it's not as easy anymore, I guess. Like, I feel like it's easier to collab with people because it's like, we'll pick up on the energy of the other yeah. person. But it's it's just, you know what, right now it's just really hard to sit alone with your own Brain. brain when it's like just it, feeling a lot of like anxiety and stuff i don't know like just about the world in general sometimes yeah. you just don't want to like be in that place but i also find because it's like kind of feels like we're repeating the same day over and over again <laughs> like there's not like a lot of room for new experience which is like also what sparks mm -hmm. inspiration for songs sometimes yeah that's a good point Brian. yeah 
Yeah, that's um, why it's fun working with other people, and then it's like he got another perspective, and so then you can kind of all like, yeah, figure something out. But like in your own brain, it's like, oh, I've been living the same day. It's just like I keep writing my songs about yeah. like the past, like oh, how I wish I could go back to the past. Like yeah. that's like every song. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I I totally understand that. Like it it can be hard to like find new inspiration when we're sort of on like a groundhog day of just like being at home and like you're not yeah for sure. Oh my god, I will totally admit I like so I've been working I've been working consistently at just at home mostly. Um, but like the days just really bleed into one another, and like I've definitely had days where it's like five o'clock, and I'm like, fuck, have I brushed my teeth even today? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Yeah, I know. We're at home too much. Like, yeah, yeah I, I've definitely fallen victim to that <laughs> at times. Yes, indeed. During this pandemic. Um, are you guys, uh, uh, what songs have you guys had on repeat lately? Ooh, I've had a lot of, um, like, bops on repeat. Try, I'm trying to elevate my mood. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a very random playlist that I have going right now. Um, I have this, the song Say La Vie by Bewitched. Does anybody oh, yeah. know that? That might be a little it's from like the 90s. From the 90s. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a 90s Irish girl band. <laughs> I've been having that song. So we've just been like dancing around to that. Yeah. Just, just like anything that we can dance around to, we have on repeat. But yeah. Dua Lipa's stuff. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, that's very awesome. Yeah. Band. And Taylor Swift. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, do you pitch the ideas for your the music video yourself? Or are you, has a director come up with it for you guys? Um, we have, for this cycle, have like come up with all the ideas. And then obviously, like, you have an idea in mind. And as a director, then, like, they help, like, mold it, it into something that can be real. Yeah. So, like, it's definitely a collaborative effort, effort but, like, um, most all of our music videos have, like, started with our yeah, idea. We have a lot of creative freedom there. And it, that feels really fantastic. Yeah. We, like, styled all the outfits and, like, we're very, very Yeah, nice. I think I. I think one of the great things about um, this is going to sound like a fucking commercial, but one of the great things about being an artist on 604 records is that um, Jonathan is like very supportive about like whatever the artist wants to do, whoever they are as an artist and he'll, he'll get behind it. So I think we're very fortunate that like, um, I don't think any of us on the label ever really get pushed into something we, we don't want to do. Like uh, that's just not really Jonathan's um, way. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. It's like a lot. Like you have all the creative freedom. Like it's, it's totally. Totally. They want to hear you guys sing. <laughs> oh no! Like <laughs> man. Oh my gosh! That's why it's like people always do that. They're like sing, and you're like, oh no, oh, no. How do, how do I do that? I can't remember. Um, uh, what can we? What can we sing? I don't know. This is like. I mean, if we sing, Josh, you have to sing too. Huh? I said, if we sing, does that mean that you have to sing too? I sing all the <laughs> Maybe in another live stream. Yeah. Sing. We're more prepared. I don't know. Mm -hmm. it's like... Yeah, that's fine. Um... Uh, have you had a music idea? Has there been a music video idea that you've had and then it's, and then it's kind of tanked? <laughs> kind of tanked? Uh, I'm not sure if they mean like that the video didn't do well or didn't end up getting made. I'm not really sure what they, I've definitely had video ideas that did not end up getting made for a good reason, probably because they weren't good ideas. <laughs> yeah. Um, we have like this one video for our song Castles. Which I love this video, but like so many people have just like not understood. Like, like I had this deep meaningful thing, like I was like, and then people are just like, I don't get it. Like I've had that so many times. And some people, people get it, like get it. And they're like, I've watched it like 25 times and I love it. Which but is then, fantastic. Like, majority, yeah. It was very like niche or something. Like most people were like, oh, it was weird. I was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> like, fair enough. It was, but it was like, but I still love it. Like I love it. But it was just one of those things like, would you call that tanking? I wouldn't, but like, you know. That's not tanked. No. Um, someone's reminding me that I broke my rib on a video shoot. That is true. Oh, what? Which which video was that? Oh, uh, it was like one of our one of our very first videos. Um, it was a song called "Decided to Break It," ironically. Um, and like one of the first things I had to do was I was in like workout gear and I was running on a treadmill and then I was supposed to fall. And we had a we had a crash pad set up off camera for me to land on. 
and I landed, I landed on it, but in a funny position. So I landed on my elbow and it just went like right through and I broke my ribs. Uh, and it was, it was like the first shot of the first day of a two day video shoot. And then after the two day video shoot was over, which was all physical stuff, then we went right on tour. <laughs> it was awful. Oh my God. That is we went on tour in like a fucking van and yeah, it was rough. Oh my God. Um, so. Someone's asking for thoughts on folklore and Evermore. Oh, I'm obsessed. Like, I love it. I mean, that, you know, I love folk music. It's like Champagne Problems. Oh, that's yeah, like, that's, that's like, like a typical favorite. Swift song that I love. Like that one and the chant on Red that was kind of similar to me. Um, all too well, if any of you guys know that one. I feel like those two are in the same camp for me. But that's not like, on folklore. I don't know. No, I know. I know. So I'm, but I just, I like the overall aesthetic of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the whole, folklore. the whole thing. Dark, like yeah. Folky thing. What about you, Josh? Do you have any thoughts on Evermore and Folklore? Do I have what? Any thoughts on Evermore and Folklore? Yeah, um, I think, um, I think there's some really nice songs on it. Um, uh, I thought it was an interesting choice to, to, after like, after she sort of spent years sort of transitioning into like a real pop artist like she like definitely made a choice to get out of country and sort of slowly transition into being just like a straight up pop act i thought it was then an interesting choice to be like and now for something completely different and i kind of like respected the respected that choice um i mean i guess when you're as powerful as taylor swift you can kind of just like do whatever the fuck you want really um which is awesome um uh but like i i i thought that was a really interesting choice because i didn't see it coming that's not what i expected her to do yeah it's pretty cool, especially because Lover was just so, such a different vibe. But I kind of feel yeah. like maybe it was one of those things, like, again, like the maybe she was just kind of over it, like she'd done it, and yeah, now she, she wanted to try something new yeah. that she hadn't done before. Yeah, and I'm, I I loved Lover. I thought that was a great song. Oh, yes. yeah. Oh, Lover. The oh, album yes. itself is just like, I love that album too. It's really awesome. Me too. Um, Oh, guys, I can't shoot. Someone's saying Freddie Mercury or Michael Jackson. Come on. I can't make a decision like that. A really hard one. Oh. Um, do you guys listen to any rock bands? Um, hmm. We really like this band called Wolf Alice, but they considered yes. a rock band. Kind of. It just depends. Yes. Genres are confusing to me sometimes. A little bit. <laughs> like... Uh, Wolf Alice, yeah, was my favorite band for my favorite band switches up a lot, but that was my favorite band for a while. Um, I also love Mother Mother. Are they like yeah, the rock, they're kind of would they be considered rock though? Are they considered, yeah, I think so. Like rock, um, more, more into like either like soft rock or like pop rock. Yeah, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, for me, I don't really care about genres. I just like good songs. I think. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, Uh, people are asking me if there's any songs I wish had been singles that weren't. Yeah, off Astoria, we should have released Burning Up as a single. It was a mistake to not do that one. Um, Uh, okay. Um, are you guys working on new stuff? You probably are. Yes, you always are. Yeah. yeah. We just yeah. want to keep I'm it going. Just keep it going, you know? Like, it's, it's, these days, like, it's good to work. It's good to kind of, like, focus on something, definitely. So, yeah, just like... Yeah, I think, like, for me, I don't know about you guys, but if, if I go through a period of time where I haven't written anything, when I start to write again, at first it feels like an out-of-shape muscle, kind of. Yeah. Like I'm slow with ideas. Like I always have a difficult time when I, when I start working on a new album because we would have just like gotten off being on tour for like two years and I hadn't, wouldn't have been like writing as much. And like the first couple songs are always so fucking slow for me. Like, and then once you kind of like hit your stride, then I find it easy. But like, um, it, it, at least for me, if it's not something I'm doing like every day, it definitely does like slow down. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, 
Um, do you guys ever have creative differences? I'm sure you do. Uh, yeah, I think. Not right now, but we have in the past. Yeah, because... More into, into pop. So like, more like for our, our pop and alternative, for our first record, I think around the end of it, I wanted to start doing more pop stuff, but Brienne was very much like still in the, still in the folk folk vibe like you not know. wanting to leave it yet and um yeah but then we kind of like for our second album we kind of like melded yeah. the two we melded it to like it's like an alternative record but yeah then, like add the folk rock influence kind of and, and then, then like a bit of pop as well yeah it's kind of like someone's asking um uh do you guys write every day even if it doesn't go anywhere we try to. we try to yeah um, yeah it's yeah. a little of a struggle during COVID, but I'm trying to get back onto the writing every day wavelength. Yeah, it's, I mean, yeah. it's the best way to get the best songs. Like that's what yeah. we like used to do all the time. But like, yeah, we'll, we're trying to get back to it right now. Yeah. A bit. Who is directing your video? Lindsay Blaine. Yes. Yeah. Lindsay. She's a very lovely. She's an amazing director. She's did she do the other one as well? She did. Yeah. Yeah, she did. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I I laughed when I saw that you guys were doing uh, like dance choreo. That's really funny. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I mean, like we did hip hop had, lessons yeah. when we were like twelve, but that's about the extent of our of our dancing <laughs> career. <laughs> oh my god, I've had to learn dance choreo a couple times for music videos, and it never ever goes well. Like never. <laughs> yeah. Because I can't. I can't fucking dance. Um, do you guys ever write poetry? Yes, yes. Yeah, we love writing poetry. Mm -hmm. I want to release a, po a poetry book one day. One day. That'd be fun. Yes. Um, uh, do you guys paint or draw? Oh, we're not really that good at that. <laughs> I feel like most of my drawings look like kid drawings. Yeah. I do. I draw. Oh, that's really? awesome. Oh, that's awesome. Um, are you watching anything on Netflix? These are really hard-hitting questions, guys. Rumi <laughs> oh, uh, RuPaul. Right. That's like Dry Grace. Yeah. RuPaul. Right now. We always just get really obsessed with one thing, and we don't want to watch anything else. So we bring out yeah. the <laughs> Before Gilmore Girls. <laughs> yeah, Amanda's just been just binged Gilmore Girls as well, actually. <laughs> so comforting. So comforting. Yes. Uh, <laughs> um, What is the silliest twin question you guys get asked? There's quite a few. There's yeah, quite a few silly questions. Yeah. A lot of what? Silly, like a lot of like lots of um, silly questions. I'm just trying to think of like, like I think the like when people are seriously asking like if I if she gets punched do I feel it like <laughs> that's that's maybe maybe a little silly. I mean, but like, how would they know though? Like, it is like, weird. We I mean, insane. that's true. Like, yeah. Like, I, I can't even blame people for some of these questions. Um, <laughs> I think that, like, on TikTok, people just keep asking us, like, would you share a boyfriend? And, like, I, I hate that one. I'm like, that's it's just a bad like, one. come on. That's just not cool, guys. Like, yeah. stop asking us that. Like, it's yeah. weird. Like, I don't know. I'm like, that's no. the one where we're like, okay, this is just this. Not even stop responding to this. <laughs> it's not just like, um, no, someone is asking, has your family been supportive in your musical career? Yes. Yeah, very supportive. Yes, they've been always. They're like very musical people. Like our mom went to music school. It's like a, a classical piano school. Um, well, it, what, what, you, I remember you guys telling me like it was your mom that took you to Nashville to learn with the songwriters and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, because she just was like, she's a go, she's a go getter. Our mom. <laughs> so she was like, okay, you're gonna do this. I'm gonna do it for real. Like you know, no yeah. messing around. You gotta take it seriously. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's, we did, we were very yeah. intense about it. So that, Is there any instrument that you can't play but you want to learn? Yeah, I know. 
piano because both of our, our parents met teaching piano at a school in Vancouver, you know. And oh, really? Yeah, it's yeah. so silly because they're both like amazing piano players and they try to teach us, <laughs> but we were like, we were just really too like crazy as children. I think we just, really, yeah. we had like our attention span was very like limited. We were like, <laughs> another on edge. Yeah. I'm currently trying to learn, I'm teaching myself to play the cello lately. That's cool. That's, so That's cool. awesome. Oh my gosh. It's very fucking hard. <laughs> but I did, I was really proud. I, I, I wrote this, like, uh, this, this piece that uses a symphony and I wanted there to be like a solo cello part. Um, and I did actually manage to, to record like a tiny little solo cello part by myself. Oh, that's cool. awesome. Cool, yeah. That's at least cool. something. Um, would you guys date twins? Guys, that's weird. <laughs> this is the thing. People do that. I've seen I it in that's... documentaries. That would be weird. That's too yeah. much. And then, like, yeah, it's it's really bizarre because, like, then their children look the same. I've like, seen now the children really, are like, and they're genetically man. siblings. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it you know, wouldn't be a terrible existence, but well, we'll just strange. seek it out. <laughs> <laughs> no. Someone's asking if you could change anything about the music industry. What would it be? I think for me, I wish that I I wish that. Um, I wish that talent and hard work was was more of a guarantee, but really it comes down to luck a lot more often than it should. Yeah, yeah. I, I think these days, like, um, social media followers matters so much. Like, it's like you almost have to be, like, an influencer, yeah, as yeah. well as a musician. So it's like you're working on that, like, just as much as you are working on, on music, which is, which is like, yeah. I think also part of the reason why we're not writing songs every day is because a lot of our like extra time goes into like the social media stuff. stuff. Yeah, which is fun a lot of the time, but I, I just wish it was like a little bit more creative and less of that. And less I of guess. just like, oh, yeah. you need to post text. Yeah. And there's so many platforms. Yeah, I think, it's, I think that's sort of the same all across the board in showbiz, like for actors too, like going out to auditions and stuff, like the movie or TV show will definitely be looking at their social media accounts, seeing how many followers they might, or how many viewers they might bring and like all that kind of shit. Yeah. Um, uh, do you have a favorite one hit wonder? I don't know. You're right. <laughs> um, what are you guys looking forward most to in 2021? Um, releasing our music, releasing music, yeah. filming music videos. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's, that's Hell cool. yeah. Yeah. Um, there it goes. Oh, do you guys remember the first album you bought yourself? Ooh, I do. It was, um, The Fame Monster, The Fame Monster by Lady Gaga. That was the first album. Really? Bought. That was the first one you bought? Yeah. HMD, downtown Vancouver. <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember that. Um, I don't remember. I don't remember mine. I don't remember. You know what I do remember, though? There was years ago, like, when Lady Gaga was, like, she was starting to be big, but she wasn't huge yet. Um, it was, like, on her first album. It was, like, Poker Face was, like, her current single kind of thing, like, right, right around that time. She played a show in Vancouver at... Um, not even at a huge, it wasn't at a huge venue yet. I don't remember where it was, maybe the Queenie. Um, and uh, for some reason we ended up there and like Jonathan was there as well. And I remember watching her show and you could just tell like the next time you see her, she's going to be in an arena. Like she was just like, you could just fucking tell. She was so good. She was such a good performer. And I wasn't expecting her to be such a great singer and a great piano player as well. And she basically was doing an arena show in like a small theater. It was, it was wicked. That's, That's so insane. cool. Wow. It's cool when you can see those people and you can just tell, like, you're going to be huge. I just know it, you know? Yeah, um, absolutely. God, phone, stop zooming in on me. Are you guys vegetarian or vegans? Um, we were vegetarian for a while. A good while. A good while. Now we kind of just, like, limit our meat intake. intake. So, like, once yeah. a week, maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah, don't you guys mostly do fish? Mostly, yeah, mostly fish. Um, we'll occasionally, right. like, 
I don't know, I won't seek it out, but, like, if I'm out and I want to order something to eat, like, I won't totally always constrict myself, but, like, I don't want to support the industry and, like, eat meat every single day, you know, three times a day or anything. Yeah. Um, all right, well, I think we should probably start to wrap it up, guys. Um, everyone at home, thank you so much for watching. There was a lot of people. Um, and Alana and Brienne, again, I'm, I'm so proud of you guys. Congratulations on the single coming out. Um, I'm so thrilled to be involved in the project, and, uh, and I, I wish you all the success that I know you're going to get. Oh, thank, thank you, you so much. That means a lot. I really yes. do. Yes, thank you so and, much. Uh, and I will see you guys soon, and uh, what, virtually or otherwise, and we will, we will finish that next song, okay? Yeah, I'm really stoked. Just let us know when you're doing Okay. Yeah. All right, you guys have a good night, and have a good shoot tomorrow. Thanks so much. Okay, good night, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys. And everyone at home, I will say goodbye to you as well. I hope you had yourselves a devil of a good time.